Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we're going to do an overview um, and review of Hannibal, the Italian campaign, 218-206 BC. This was published in Paper Wars, issue 95, um, originally designed by Peter L. Hollinger and produced by Steven Newberg and Compass Team. So it says right there. Um, so I'm going to do a general overview. I'm not going to do a full tutorial. There's kind of a lot to this game, actually. Um, it is not a single-player game as well. It is a two-player game dedicated. So if you want to pick up and play it solitaire, keep in mind you're going to be playing both sides. Um, and like I said, there's kind of a lot to the game, especially since the rules are only like eight pages long. There's actually, it's, it does not feel like an eight-page rule book type of game. So just keep that in mind if you pick it up for solitaire play. Um, two-player, uh, you know, that's what it's designed for, so no problems there. Um... Like I said, we'll do a general overview. I just don't want to dive into a tutorial. I think it'd just be a little too much for this type of game and for you guys. Uh, and before I get into the rest of this, before I get started, please, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I would love to get your subscription. Um, you know, if you feel that I put out good content, good videos, throw me a subscription. I certainly would love that. I know there's a lot of you guys out there who are watching my videos. I see you comment that actually aren't even subscribed yet, but you'll comment on uh, video after video of mine. So I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Um, just helps me to make good videos, to get more videos out there, to get more games, um, et cetera, et cetera. Also, I have a uh, Patreon that I've created that I would love to see you guys jump on. If you feel, again, that I'm putting out good content, you want me to see me keep continuing to make good content, go ahead, check out my Patreon. And if you think I'm worth it, go ahead and subscribe there. Um, all right, let's get on to the game. All right, so I have the game board set up here. Uh, you can see most of the actual play area, if not all of it. Um, obviously, the whole boot of Italy here um, is the primary gonna be a play area for this game. I mean, we're talking about Hannibal's Italian campaign, right? Nothing else, not in you know North Africa, anything like that. Um, starting in 218 BC. The game has a full campaign mode, which runs from the 218 to 206, and then it has a short version, 218 to 212 BC. Um, you can play it however you want. It just has di you know different victory conditions, different things happen during it. But the way this game is set up, um, it's going to be take it played during a, like a summer segment and then a winter segment, and each side's going to go, and you're going to go. It's going to the Carthaginian player gets to pick. They're going to pick. Okay, I'm going to go first or go second. And then what it does is during the summer segment, it'll be first player, second player. And then in winter, it goes second player, first player. So whoever gets to go first in the summer segment, they get to go the very first of, you know, the turn. And each turn is a year, by the way. Um, you then, the other player gets to go second. They get to go again during the beginning of the winter before you. So it's kind of that trade-off of you get to go first, but then you're not going to have a movement turn until, you know, basically the other person gets to go twice. Um you play through a summer segment, there's going to be Roman elections that occur right away. And I'll explain that a little bit here. Um, there's going to be Carthaginians may or may not get reinforcements. Uh, they determine who the has initiative, so who's that first and second player, like I said. And then as you do the first player, they get to recruit new units. And again, this just depends on kind of what's going on, where you are, um, whether you have there's Roman recruitment schedule is on a schedule, so you don't roll. It is just completely on a schedule of, you know, Roman legions you're going to get from Latium, Etruria, Sabini, Umbria, um, Picenum. You're going to get all those units. Um, it's going to be on a chart. For the Carthaginian player, besides the Carthaginian uh, reinforcement phase, you have a allied or Gaulish recruitment schedule. Um, when you roll on that, you're going to go ahead and it'll give you a number of how many recruits you're going to get. And you have little cups. They either have your allied units or your Gaul units here. Um, that's a little hard to see, sorry about that. Basically, you're gonna have your guys, and they have a combat strength on there, very simple. And you're gonna draw from there because you never know what you're gonna get, you know, how how strong the units are gonna be. Allied unit there with a the strength of three. Um, and that's gonna just determine, you know, when you draw from there. Um, first player's gonna go, they set after they recruit, then they do movement. Uh, movement, you get quite a bit of movement points, which makes sense because each turn is a full year. So, you, you know, your armies are going to be able to march quite a bit, of, uh, quite a ways. It's just going to kind of depend on what you want to do then. I mean, you're going to go besiege cities like Hanno is doing right here. Are you going to go and go around cities and kind of make your way down to different areas, um, different provinces? So as you can see, obviously, we're talking about all of, you know, Rome, Italy here, um, the Roman Republic. But... 
if you notice there are those dashed lines, that shows the different provinces. And depending on the different provinces, you know, some are more likely to side with Hannibal, or at least be convinced to side with him, right? And versus others are not. Um, and the game represents that. If you, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there are hash lines in certain provinces, and those represent certain advantages for the uh, Carthaginian player where they can actually get recruitment and they can recruit their allies. If they don't have a leader, and the game is run by leaders here, you know, whether it's Hannibal or the various Roman leaders, um, they're not going to be able to recruit their units. So if they're in the wrong place, wrong province, they're not going to be able to recruit anybody because they're not going to find any sympathetic Romans to join them. Um, or sympathetic Italians, I should say. So, because generally the Romans are just going to be right over here. Um, all right, so you have those movement phases. Each, you know, each, each player moves. Um, as part of movement, you conduct diplomacy. Diplomacy is simply a way to take possession of a city without besieging it. Um, each city is going to have a number underneath it. I know it's hard to see where you guys are. I'll zoom in a little bit here in a second. Um, each city is going to have a number underneath it. That's going to control diplomacy. If you have enough force when you roll up to it, you basically can make a diplomacy roll, die roll. If you succeed, yeah, they come over to your side without you having to fight them. Um, fail, well, you may have to besiege them. So it's up to you. Or you may, like I said, you may just pass them by. Um, when it comes to the actual diplomacy, very easy, you know, very simple. It really just comes down to a couple numbers and a die roll. So, sorry, my, my, I heard my dog barking. Um, I think he stopped now. So, sorry for the disruption there, everyone. All right, so after you've done, you know, first player's move, second player's move, there's going to be combat phase. Now, combat is very, um, very voluntary. What I mean by that is literally both sides have to want to conduct combat. If either side does not want to, then I hear my dogs barking. I'm going to go take care of them. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, if you have dogs, you know how it goes. All right. So um, we've conducted our movement. We're getting into the combat phase here. And uh, the game calls it joint combat. Because like I explained, um, it's really both sides have to want to do combat. Either side can avoid it very easily. Um, both, both sides have to want to do battle, which is pretty uh, standard. It was historically accurate right for the most part it was both sides were ready to rumble that's how it worked if one side didn't want to they just maneuver they just leave and there what usually wasn't a whole lot an attacker could do other than obviously sieging cities so um combat is going to be fought between the two sides the way the game has it set up is that you're going to have your leaders on the map and then you're going to have your actual combat units for instance if you can see down here carthaginian leader box you can see the actual, um, like Hannibal has some cavalry, infantry, Hamilcar, cavalry, infantry, etc. And my elephants are all dead. You do start with elephants, of course, because he takes over the Alps. Uh, but uh, they're all dead by now, because right now this game is in 215 BC. Uh, anyway, so when you have your combat, pretty standard. You're going to have your leaders. They're just going to occupy the same hex. And if both sides agree, like basically, all right, yeah, let's fight it out. You're going to go ahead. Very simple. Um, you're going to reveal the strength points, whoever's the attacker, which is the second person, um, the second player for that turn. So remember, there's a first player and a second player. Whoever's the second player, they're the one who is given like the last choice to move away or attack. They become like the attacker. Um, and then what you do, very simple, you go ahead, add up the strength points of each side, compare it to form a ratio. So you have like a field combat results table right here. I know it's a little sideways for you guys, but it says, you know, one, one to two odds, one to one odds, two to one, three to one, etc. Pretty standard for war games. Um, you're going to go ahead and make a die roll, 1d6, and they're going to have modifiers. You're going to have modifiers such as uh, leadership rating, which say in this case, we're looking at Hannibal um, and Marcellus. So Hannibal has a two for leadership rating. Marcellus is going to have a one. So in this case, if whatever it's attacking, defending, plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, whatever, whatever works. Um, obviously, Hannibal's two would be reduced by one from here. So whichever, again, which, whoever's attacking, defending, uh, would end up being either a plus one or a minus one for the Carthaginian player in this case. Um, and then you would look at, say, are there elephants? The elephants add either plus one, again, or minus one, depending on um, who's attacking and who's defending. Go ahead and roll. And then you have pretty standard results. Uh, we are since we are looking at um, medieval, you know, not medieval, the ancient style battles, and we're looking at full year turns. The 
it can be pretty brutal on here. So, for instance, if you have two to one odds, you may have a case where the defender, you roll high, the defender loses four steps. Now, the units, wherever he was, doesn't matter right now, I'm just showing off the game. Um, the units are going to be, I'll show you them right now since we're talking about combat. And you can see, of course, <sighs> Carthaginian, you know, down here, the blue Roman here with kind of the orange color. Um, when you lose a step, so say if it's defender loses four or attacker loses four or attacker loses five, you're going to flip them over. So each one of these, so this uh, Roman 10 SP infantry and 3 SP represents, uh, cavalry represents a legion. You'd flip them over. You may start, so you may be reduced like this. Okay, these are reduced. You know, the Roman legion gets reduced as well. But then something like the Roman cavalry, he doesn't have a reduced side. He is just eliminated. So very quickly, if you're flipping these units, right, for losses, you're very quickly going to lose a lot of strength points. And that just represents, you know, armies or parts of armies being completely wiped out or, you know, driven from the field, um, dispersed to the point where they're no longer an effective fighting force, at least for the rest of that turn. So it's all pretty simple to do. Um, there is little, there's little steps, little things along with it, but I've basically explained it um, fairly simple to do. All right, so that's combat for regular combat. Siege combat, pretty simple as well. Um, you're going to have your guys, say, Hanno here with his Gaulish leader rolls up to this city of Pastoria, fortified city. They want to besiege it. They're not able to win it over with diplomacy. So they go ahead and they post up over it. You grab a siege marker, starts at six, works its way down to three. In each turn, you go ahead and you roll. We have to check the strength points first, assuming you have um, more strength points. And like I think it's two-thirds... Two thirds more, two thirds of it. You can go ahead and you start rolling. Um, very simple. You roll, and if you get whatever the number is or higher, you win the siege. You take over the city, and then you have these fun little control markers. You go ahead and place on the city. Speaking of control markers, there are actually control markers for all the provinces as well. Because I forgot to mention this, which is kind of a big deal. My bad. Um, you have your so like Carthage. You can see Carthage control marker. Flip it over. Roman control marker, each province, so Cisalpine Gaul in this case, um, you know, Latium down here, you're going to have a victory point value for it, which when the Carthaginians control it at the end of a turn, which I'll get to, but you have control markers, and there are a couple things, if it's whoever side controls every city, or if you have whichever side has more strength points in the province, will then control that province, and that's actually determined at the beginning of the... Uh, combat because what you'll do is it's called foraging so and this is what a big one i forgot totally forgot to mention my bad um you actually have a you can see the roman forge box right here it's upside down sorry you can't the, map, the way the map's set up it's definitely designed for two players right one person sit over there one person to sit down here there's a carthaginian forge box as well at the beginning of combat if you, your side doesn't control that province you have to send one fourth of your troops off to forage uh, basically, they're you know implying they're busy if they don't run off that second right for the battle, but implying that they're already busy foraging the entire time. So, makes sense? All right. Hopefully it does. Okay, we go on to, like I said, there's that siege combat. There's also siege combat where you have um, the major fortresses, class 1 fortress, such as Rome and Capua, which those you will have to besiege and build, uh, build siege works, which you have a fun little... Siege marker four. All right. Um, let's see here. So you finish all that. You go on to the winter segment now. And then that'll be the, se the second player goes. Remember, so the second player gets to go twice in a row. First player goes. You have another combat. You do determination. Control determination, which again determines provinces. Um, elephant attrition. So every turn during winter, you're going to roll on this allied Gaulish recruitment schedule and elephant attrition table. For instance, right now. The Carthaginian player, at my point in this game, four turns in, has no elephants left. They've all died. So some will show up as reinforcements, actually, this turn. But right now they're all dead, unfortunately. They died over time. Um, you're gonna have, Then you're going to do the Carthaginian victory point determination, which, remember I mentioned every province. So say Cisalpine Gaul, 10 victory points. Um, Liguria, 30 VPs, etc. And then also VPs for eliminating... Roman units, you're going to add those up. 
And at the you had all of them up every turn at the end of the either the short scenario or the for the full campaign, you're gonna go ahead and look at the victory points that the Carthaginian player has accrued, and that will determine whether they win or not. And that is Hannibal. All right. Uh, one thing I want to touch on before I finished up my overview and review here was and dive into the review was the election system. So I mentioned uh, at the very beginning the Roman election phase. I kind of skipped over that. We got we went to movement, combat, etc. Um, the election phase is actually I don't want to say it's elaborate because it's not that elaborate, but it is a kind of a key part of the game because what it's going to do is going to determine for the Roman player what leaders are going to have out there. Whether you're going to have leaders that are effective at combat, help you with combat like Marcellus, or, excuse me, um, leaders that are not as effective, like Paulus here. So, um, if you go ahead, you guys can see, you can see there's a Senate election box. I know, I'm sorry, it's upside down. I, the way I have it set up my table, I can only play from one side. I mean, it's all, I play, sol play solitaire. Um, unfortunately, the map is printed, you know, half this way, half that way. Again, it is a, it's clearly a two-player game. I'll dive into that during my um, overview, or my actual review. Anyway, um, you have the Roman Senate, and you have each of the leaders listed, and these are leaders that you're going to be able to use during the game. So there's a whole bunch of them. Um, Senate election box. And what's going to happen without getting into the nitty gritty? Each turn, you're going to have certain leaders uh, that are going to be able to come up to the Senate election box, and as long as they're available that year, because there are years listed, you're going to go ahead and randomly, uh, we're well, going to randomly select some that are available, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and roll on a chart. Um, then you're going to check a couple things. You're going to check, have this has this leader served as a consul before? Were they involved in a battle? How did that battle go? Did they beat the Carthaginians? Did they get beat up? Um, did they serve as consul last year, ever before? Um, are they a certain leader, Salin, uh, Sal Salinator, however you pronounce his name? He is a minus one on his rolls all the time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's different modifiers. Um, you go ahead and you're going to roll for each one. It's in the election box, and then when you get to the final amount, you're going to go ahead, um, you look at all the numbers, the top two are going to be elected as consuls, and you have, and here's where you start having markers um, for consul, proconsul, praetor, and what you can do is you can, or if you have a leader that you want to keep, you don't want to get rid of, you may say, all right, I'm going to make him the proconsul, so you don't actually send him back, but then he has... Um, reduced abilities as well being a proconsul versus a consul so uh the, the election system is it's interesting how it works it's definitely um and there's a simpler way the rulebook has a simpler way that's basically like you randomly pick a t the two of them um the designer though in, in in the rules mentions that hey that's not considered the more of the simulation that's just more of a random way to do it if you want to play it faster so um hopefully that explained it. I know it was a little confusing there. Trust me, it's it's kind of complicated. It's not overly complicated, but there's a little bit. Also, you can see things like the served markers. And there's troops here. Those are just abstracted to show, you know, you have just the leader on the on the map, right? And then you can put the troops in their box to show that's their leading. Otherwise, you're going to have the map filled with stacks of troops uh, marching over the place. That is the election phase. All right, everyone. So time for my review. What are my thoughts on Hannibal, the Italian campaign? I will say this, for having something like eight pages of rules, this game does not play like a game with eight pages of rules. Every rule is something that's important. It's not just, you know, a lot of, you know, sometimes you have games where you're reading the rules and you're like, and it just kind of explains a lot of basics, you know. They'll spend one page telling you about a zone of control and about how to move and add, you know, hex to hex and add movement. This game doesn't even waste time doing that. I mean, it explains things, but then it just dives in. And there's a lot going on. Um, I think you can probably tell as I was trying to explain. Because I wanted to run through an overview quick. Again, this is, I didn't want to do a full tutorial with this game. If only because it is so complicated. Um, it is one of the heavier magazine war games I've ever played. So, what can I say? Do I like it? Do I not like it? I do like it. But, and here's where I'll do, you know, I'll cover the things I kind of didn't like. Or that just I want you to know before I dive into things I do like. Um, the things I had trouble with is that I think this is definitely much stronger as a two player game. Now there is a little bit hidden, um, there's hidden information when it comes to the units. It's supposed to be, you know, Hey, say you have a leader moving around. Well, the other side's not supposed to know how many troops he has, not, you know what I mean? And so you're supposed to reveal them later, things like that. So you lose a little bit of that when you're playing both sides. Um, there's no surprises, right? I mean, which was a big part of ancient warfare 
you may have a general idea of how strong the enemy was, but you may not. Um, you know, no satellites, there's no overhead flights of, you know, UAVs or reconnaissance planes or anything like that, right? It was literally, you walked around and like, oh, hey, there's the bad guys. Like, should we go beat them up? I don't know. They could beat us up. Who knows? In this one, you know what's going to happen ahead of time because of that. Um, and that's maybe a, a problem with a lot of Ancients games, but it is what it is. Um, the way the map set up, the way the uh, actual, not just the map here, but the actual board, right? So the board you're getting, it did cause me a little trouble. Again, it's clearly designed as two-player, right? This is, you have half the things face one way, the other half, and there's a lot of them, right? Boxes and charts that face the other way. Um, so when you're sitting there, you're playing solo, it's gonna, you're gonna struggle a little bit. I actually had to make copies of these charts and print them off. Um, took a picture of them and printed off a copy. I had them of right side up and I put them over here in my little play area. I'll show you quick. So that way you can see like the different things and have them ready to go as opposed to trying to read them upside down constantly. Um, rules themselves, they could be better. Um, they're all right. I mean, they're not a huge, there's nothing like, it's, it's one of those things where it's hard to point out and say, oh, this was bad, this is bad, or this doesn't work. There's just, there's a lot to them. And they're kind of, you kind of jump all over the place. So as you're reading the rules and you're, you read them and they seem fine. And then you go to play, at least this is for me, right? This is my my review, my thoughts. Um, I went to play and I kind of struggled. I struggled for pretty much the whole time I've been playing. I've struggled a little bit with the rules just because there's so many little things to remember, so many little uh, kind of exceptions, how you manage things. Each side is different. Romans, Carthaginians, which is, I mean, makes sense. That is a fact. They were very different. Um, and then when it came to, I'll say the main thing that I really struggled with was the province control, city control issue. I was never 100% sure how, when to determine who controls a province. I get the idea behind it, of course, you know, looking at the cities, looking at um, who has greater strength points in a province, but when it applies, how it applies, how quickly you can move. In my games, I was struggling to get the Carthaginians down here. Historically, you know, Hannibal was all over the place, right? Well, and, you know, he was able to recruit guys down here. The toe of uh, Italy basically broke away from Rome's control. I mean, I had I had trouble. Look, he could barely made it down here. Like, I was having, I'm having trouble um, achieving historical results, seemingly. Now, I don't know if that's a problem with the game or if it's just a problem with how I'm playing. Um, it could be a problem with how I'm interpreting the rules. But I'll just say this is a struggle a little bit with it. So, um, I think the election system, although very interesting is kind of no more, it's not that much more historical or I don't think much of a simulation than the randomness, the random method. What I mean by that is the rules mentioned, and I, I mentioned this in my overview, that you can do the random method to find your leaders, but it's not, it's not a good simulation. Well, okay, but I mean, picking a few randomly, putting them in the box, and then roll, dicing off, how is that a good simulation either? Yes, there's some modifiers for where they console, did they win a battle, lose a battle, etc. But at the same time, at the end of it, it I mean, it's still just a couple modifiers on a die roll, right? Like, we're not, this isn't a supercomputer simulating something a thousand times. This isn't, you know, some elaborate 40-page rule book type book where we are really digging deep. I mean, you're still kind of dice, just dicing off with a couple modifiers thrown in. So either way, I feel like I kind of got bogged down every turn doing the Roman elections. Now I understand that's important. I understand it was a huge part of the Roman Republic. Um, big history buff here, and I love Roman history especially. The problem is, for me, is when you're playing a war game like this and you're diving into the combat, especially one is this long, drawn-out campaign, and you know, you're know you having, what is it, 12 turns where you're having to do Roman elections 12 times? I mean just kind of drags away to, I think it takes away a little bit from the actual combat what's happening on the map because all that really matters is you're making some die rolls adding some modifiers up and then picking okay and I'll send him out and I'll send him out you know I'll send him here and him there done you know with your Roman legions so I struggle with those things those are definitely things that I you know is controlling the provinces how the control works and then the election system so things I like the game itself when it comes to the Movement in combat, I like the fact that, you know, since it is a year turn, you guys can move pretty far. If you're able to get, you know, again, you can't go fortified cities, you have to siege them or try to win them over with diplomacy. I like that diplomacy is an option. Again, it's really only a simple die roll compared to the number under the city name, but I do like it. Just adds to that little extra dimension, right? So that it's not just combat. 
there is actually some level of diplomacy. Again, it's it's a fairly, you know, simplified method version of diplomacy, of course, but it is in their game. So if you want that, um, combat is super simple comparing, um, you know, strength points and then, you know, seeing who controls province, if you can figure that out, um, then you compare the strength points, who's going to, if there's going to be units forging or not, determine a ratio, go ahead and roll with modifiers, boom, you have your result. Each side can continue, each side can not continue, whatever they want to do. So uh, those things are very simple and very easy, and I like how they work. I like the fact that the Romans, yeah, you're as you're playing, trust me, your Romans are going to lose a lot of legions, but they also recruit a ton of legions every turn. So that really, again, is historical, right? The fact that the Romans were getting their butt kicked over and over, but they never gave up, never stopped, and they got more and more legions, and finally, you know, Hannibal wasn't getting his support, and he had to peace out and get out of here. So... Final thoughts on the game. I like it. I don't know if I like it for a solitaire player as much as I hoped I would. Um, I do not think it's a bad game. I think it's a good game on its own. I think it's probably a good, a decently good game as a two-player game. I don't know how well it works solitaire. What From the ease of use of the way the map is set up um, to the way that you know you have hidden, hidden, uh, unit, hidden unit values, right? Hidden army values to the way that you kind of, the, the way the movement with the back and forth of the movement and how it works with, you know, okay, first player, second player, second player, first player. The way that's designed really gives a trade-off. Well, when you're playing by yourself, that's not really, there's, there's, it's hard to, it's hard to use that trade-off as part of the game, right? I don't know, I'm doing a poor job explaining it. So, in real life or in a two-player game, right, it would be you as the first player, Carthaginian player gets to choose, and you say, I'm going to go first. When well, the Roman player is going to do two of their actions in a row, then you get to go. Well, that makes more sense, I think, two-player, because you're going to have completely different ideas of what you're doing on your turn, versus when you're playing each side, you, it's hard to, yes, you're going to play each side to the best of your ability, but at the same time, you're going to do your first player, Carthaginian, let's, let's say, um, or it could be the Romans, because again, Carthaginian player gets to pick which one. But then the other side gets to go twice. Then the others go back to the other side to go, well, you probably already had your plan in mind of what you were going to do, you know, two movements, whatever, combat, movement, combat, try to do combat. And that's another thing. Um, combat, because it's not, because combat is voluntary for both sides, you literally are sitting there deciding for both sides at the exact same time, do I do combat or not? And again, I think that that is hurt when you're trying to play solo. I think two player, it would shine. Because you kind of look at each other and who's bluffing, who's, yeah, I'll do combat. Oh, yeah, I do not. I, I do. Okay, yes, let's let's fight out a round. And then you can maybe keep fighting and maybe don't. Well, you're, you look in the mirror and say, am I going to bluff myself? No, you know whether you're going to fight or not, right? And because of that, I mean, you could sit there and have the units move around and never fight. Because they could basically always maneuver away from each other. There's never going to, it's never uh, forced combat, right? Involuntary combat. It's always voluntary. Um, other than like sieges, so... Final thoughts, good game, don't know if it's great solitaire, I struggled with a couple of the rules, especially province control, um, and the Roman election system dragged it down a little bit for me, overall, I think there is something here, especially if you want to, if you love Roman games, you want to play your two player, I'd say you could definitely check this one out, if you play, even if you love Roman games, but you play solo, this might be one you want to double check. You, the rule book is on Compass Games website. So go check it out. See if the rules be something you would like to solo. Otherwise, for me, just didn't really hit the spot um, as a solitaire game. So, all right. Well, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you like the look at this game. Um, again, it is a fun one. Just maybe it's not for me, especially not for me playing at solitaire. So, till next time, guys. Later.